Today we're going to replace a chain on a 6, 7, 8, and 9 speed. This will work for all those. Uh, we're going to look for a quick link. If we don't see a quick link, we're going to use a regular chain break. And then we got a pin. Looks something like that. This tool works with a SRAM quick link and a KMC. Shimano usually runs with a, a pin. Uh, they made this tool for a reason, works great. I definitely get one. Uh, no matter what, uh, what you have going on, you have a bent link, you're out in the field, you're at home, um, you're going to need a chain tool. Either you got your uh, compact chain tool or you got your uh, home or shop style chain tool. I'm going to go ahead and relax all your derailleurs. This is your rested position, smallest gear in the rear, smallest gear in the front, and then you're going to take your chain, you're going to have it rest on the inside of the frame. It's going to give you lots of slack to work with. You can choose any link, doesn't matter, just as long as you aim for the middle and uh, go ahead and push it through all the way out. This is your finished product with your pin pushed all the way out. I'm going to go ahead and back this all the way out and um, go ahead and remove your chain. I like to grab the chain from the top and in the middle, just pull it all the way out and it should comply. Pay attention to chain orientation. Uh, Shimano usually runs a front side and a back side. Uh, front side you want facing towards you, that's the top picture up there. We always want the logo facing you, something you can read. Um, the other side has is blank, so that will go on the non-drive side. Shimano does give you an extra pin. That's the pin you will be using. This is a 10-speed specific pin. Get your chain all unraveled. There's no knots, no tangles. We can pick that up. We're going to measure. It's a big chain ring, so big to big. Okay, got the chain on the big, cog in the rear, big chain ring on the front. Have it meet somewhere in between on the bottom. It's going to be plenty of room to work with. Right now I just made a makeshift piece of wire, um, probably a, a bent spoke. Um, hold that together. Um, you're going to hang on to, you're going to keep one end here. We got the inner link here, um, or male, and then we have a, a we call that female or outer link. Um, that's what we want to end up with. So we're going to mate this together, bring it tight, and then we're going to add one link. So one link would actually be an inner and an outer link. So from my finger out, that's considered one link right there. So one full link is approximately one inch. Um, most manufacturers want you to add about one inch extra so you're not having a super tight chain. Uh, that way uh, shifting isn't a big problem. It'll get onto that ring nice and easy. So here we got, uh, that'd be half link or half link together. That's one full link. Uh, this one we'll call, uh, this is our inner link with our inner plates and then the outer plates, so we also call it uh, male and female, if you're familiar with electrical. When using a pin, uh, we are going to need uh, inner link and outer link so they can match up together, and once they're together, this pin will go right through them. Uh, right now, the uh, front piece, the longer piece, that's the piece that will be broken off. Um, the shorter piece is the actual pin uh, that will be um, in between holding everything together. If you're running a quick link you will need two inner plates. They're going to match up together because your quick links already have built-in pins with them and they will match up just like that. If we get a good look at this side plate here, um, one side is a little wider. That's where the pin is going to fit through. Once you get that together, you're going to pull them apart and it will click and uh, should make full contact and stay locked. Once you cut your excess chain, this is what's left on this bike. Every bike will be different depending if it's a small, medium, large. Uh, the gearing you're running, uh, large gears, small gears, um, your excess uh, piece of chain will change. So don't worry about that. Here we ran the chain through the rear derailleur. Uh, probably best to maybe take some videos or take a picture of what you have going on first. Uh, most importantly, uh, you want to make sure that uh, right in the middle here, 
um, you get it on top of that piece of metal. Um, we're not rubbing on top of it. A lot of times that happens and you don't even notice it um, unless you got a good ear for it. Um, and also we're running, we're resting the chain on the inside of the frame. We're letting it rest so we have lots of slack to play with. Otherwise we're going to be fighting the spring of our rear derailleur, which we don't want to do. The great thing about the chain that they give you, it does have a piece that is a guide, it's tapered. That piece fits in, um, slide it through. You can actually walk away, get your tool, take a break. Um, once we push it all the way through, we're gonna snap it off. So now we're gonna use the chain tool. Um, this is where some people like to use a quick link. Um, makes this task a little bit quicker. Um, you're actually getting a half link with the quick links. Um, but in any case, uh, it's good to carry a spare. Most importantly, we want that pin to be flush, just like the rest of the pins on the sides. Um, you can see the excess uh, tapered pin on the other side. We're gonna remove our chain tool, or we're gonna use our chain tool to snap it off. Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, mount our chain back onto our chain ring. Um, go ahead and push down on the lower pulley towards the front of the bike. So we've got a lot of chain slack right there. We're going to use that so we can grab that chain from the front and wrap it onto our smallest chain ring in the front. Chains mounted back onto the chain ring. Got some good tension there. We're good to go. You want to go through your gears, all your gears, shifting, um, test ride it uh, definitely before you go on any ride. Uh, make sure everything's good. Um, you never know if something's, something's changed, uh, especially if you're working on somebody else's bike. Test rides are always the last thing you're going to do after working on your bike. Thanks.